Good morning and welcome to Anonic webinar. On today's agenda, 9.05, we have Vegar from Anonic, my colleague, who's going to talk about how to maximize your content production. Welcome everyone to the uh, today's meetup and this um, presentation about content ops or how to maximize your content production. So what is the issue of today's uh, content production world? In one end, we have a content strategy. Uh, people um, in the board uh, with grand ambitious uh, strategies for uh, how your content should work. And yeah, guidelines and broad uh, goals to achieve. And in the other end, we have the delivery. And today uh, we have like uh, X number of channels, like from uh, regular desktop internet to apps on uh, your uh, watch or uh, other uh, IoT appliance like the refrigerator or coffee maker. So today's uh, channels, uh, the delivery of your content today is so fragmented. It's uh, also called omnichannel. So how does this leave the production? But, uh, production is um, torn between uh, the grand strategy and the incredibly fragmented delivery of today's uh, uh, digital world. So what to do? So uh, one of the answers to this is uh, the principle of content ops. It's a principle for integrating people, process, and technology. And that means to make them work together as one. Uh, we can start with uh, how uh, Anonic has um, uh, approached uh, the content apps, and we'll start with people. In Anonic, we have some uh, these uh, roughly these four roles, and it's important to remember that. Uh, people can inhabit multiple roles and a single role can include multiple people. So it's uh, really flexible, but um, all in all in Anonic, we have a content creator, that is me. We have reviewers, that is uh, my C uh, CEO and Steve and uh, our external inbound agency called Avidly. So the uh, content creator cr obviously creates content in the form of writing blog posts or recording pod podcasts or uh, filming videos and the reviewers task is to uh, obviously to review quality control and root out errors and fill in some um, yeah, technical stuff if that's necessary and that's also the subject matter experts role in our case that is our cto often or our ceo morton uh, who often knows more about for instance um, uh, micro uh, just uh, well, what is it called micro yeah uh, about IOT and stuff like that um, I'm uh, not an expert in technical stuff as much as Morton or Thomas in Anonic for instance and the senior stakeholders that's also Martin so Morton is uh, having multiple roles so it seems like he is doing the most uh, job here but uh, <laughs> that's obviously obviously not an issue it's uh, the content creator who is doing mo the most of the jobs so people are having clear uh, roles, but they also are flexible in uh, what hat they ha are having on and when. So all in all, in Anonic, that uh, this collaboration works well. The other, uh, the second pillar of content ops is the process. So this is our uh, overview of our process. Our process is, uh, as you can see, not a linear um, uh, sequence. It's a uh, um, circular sequence in that um, we uh, we start with uh, making a persona, uh, a semi-fictionist um, target audience that we are writing for. For If we are writing for no one in particular, we, uh, we are uh, not writing good content, obviously. So every 
every half year we start a new in this uh, process. We start with Persona, this guy. Uh, we'll come back to him. That's more of a one-off uh, option, but every half year we have a content workshop. It's down here in the lower left corner. We start with finding out what do our uh, personas and customers and clients and partners, what are they interested in? What uh, topics uh, should we create content about? So after having a grand <laughs> workshop, we, we rate and um, and prioritize what topics we should write about before uh, plotting them into a calendar, a content calendar for the next uh, half year or so. In, or in our case, the next year, we have a content calendar up to August next, next year. Uh, about, uh, yeah, we will get back to the calendar later. Uh, and after uh, having plotted in every topic, you know, titles of blog posts, for instance, we get um, to the order form stage, which means uh, we fill out uh, their, uh, essentially the recipe for what um, the content should uh, look like and what uh, contents it should be in the content. In, uh, in, in the, we do it in keywords um, form. We will get back to that too. And after having filled out the, the order form or the blueprint for the piece of content, we have the production phase where we produce it, obviously. And after that, we had the review phase where uh, stakeholders and subject matter experts uh, go into the content to verify it and uh, make it uh, as good as possible. And then we had the publishing stage. We published the uh, content and this is where many people uh, just uh, lock the drawer and throw away the key, but that's not the issue with us. We think that when you, you can't forget the content that's already out there, you have to go to the maintenance uh, uh, mode of the, uh, this process, which is to um, regularly, for instance, every year or so, uh, go back and watch your in, uh, look through your inventory of the contents and see what needs to be updated or what needs to be unpublished or what's ne what just needs to be, can, can be left alone. And then we go back to the um, start of the process again. Uh, as I said, persona is often a one-off thing, but if you need to, if you have seen that you have missed uh, your, um, uh, your target audience, you maybe have to maintain or uh, update your persona as well. But in any case, every half year, we go back to the content workshop and find out what does our what do our audience really care about? Uh, what topics should we have now for the next half year? And we go back and uh, brainstorm and f find new titles, and then plot the new topics into the calendar and so on. And this is a circular process occurring every half year. Yeah, and now we go into the details. I've already spoken a, a little bit about this, but we can now go into a little more details about the different stages. So this is uh, one of our personas, Advisor Andrew. Do any of you guys uh, feel uh, that this is you? <laughs> um, so a uh, persona is about, um, it's a semi-fictional personalization of an ideal target audience for us. So it addresses uh, the, the persona's life situation, education, what triggers him, what challenges he has, what is a definitely no-go, and what influences uh, of channels he, uh, does he have. So if we can um, act on triggers and interests and steer away from the off-putting uh, buzzwords or something that he doesn't like, that will make um, that much a better content uh, and relevant content for this type of um, persona. So the next uh, phase is uh, the content workshop that uh, we are talking about. Here you can see that we have, uh, we're in this uh, sales funnel it is, top of funnel it's more general uh, articles, middle of funnel it's more uh, explanatory guides, uh, guides and stuff like that. And bottom of funnel is more sales oriented uh, content. So we obviously don't start with sales uh, oriented articles to push to people. We, we, we would like to um, uh, 
attract them with the um, more general articles like uh, what is a CMS, what are content operations before moving down to how to use content operations. Uh, yeah, the content workshop, you can see we have different files, different titles, and we rank them and we tie them into what type of content type and what type of uh, premium content we should uh, attach to them. So here's the calendar. Here we see a nice rainbow color on the status uh, column. And we use this calendar uh, as both uh, uh, a schedule plan and to look into the future. And we also use, this, use it as a backwards reference to the past to see uh, what we published and when and stuff like that. And this is a really nice tool to, we, we do this in Google Sheets. And we, it's a nice tool to get an overview of uh, all our blog posts, but you can also put in every type of content you would like in this kind of uh, setup. So here we'll also see the authors, the persona, the, uh, a little briefing, and what premium content is attached or associated with the piece of content. So here's an example of order form. As you can see, it's like a recipe. We have, what is the theme? a pain point for the persona, what are we trying to address with this um, piece of content, what, where in the file it is, the premium content, uh, what search terms uh, we should address, and the main points in the keyword uh, format, and stuff like that. Really, this is a really nice way to uh, make quality content and uh, make the structure and make it logical and um, yeah, really nice and tidy, I recommend it. And this is the production phase. Uh, I prefer to use Google uh, Docs to write, but it's, it can also be done, of course, in uh, Content Studio in Analyc. Uh, uh, I think uh, this is a bit more flexible in word processing, but uh, of course you can do the same uh, in Anonic. And uh, it's um, a benefit to do it in Anonic is that you can then you don't have to make the links again in uh, in Anonic because here we have links as URLs, but in Anonic, as you probably know, you can make the links as content items, and then the links will never break if you change the URLs and what. And this is the uh, example of the review phase. Uh, here you can see that Stina and Morten has uh, said it's cool and good stuff, and that's very nice to know. And I, I tag them in um, Google Docs, but you can also, of course, do it in um, uh, Content Studio with the issues management. We will see that later. Here we have a pub example of publishing in Content Studio, where we have just plotted in the image, the author, the uh, teaser text and body text into the left and then get the, getting a preview to the right. Nice, uh, nice going. And this is uh, an example of maintenance. This is an already published uh, blog post called Digital Transformation Trends. And I changed it, uh, changed it to 2021 and uh, I have now, um, uh, you don't see it here, but I have assigned Morton and I have a, uh, made a little note that this is, is this became an entirely new and long article. And it's in, in the item um, tab, it's uh, directly, um, you can directly access the piece of content. So this is an example of how we can um, use the issues management in Content Studio to uh, get uh, editorial feedback on, on content that you, are ready to publish or to republish. And then we have come to the third pillar of content ops, which is technology. And of course we use Anonic XP or and Content Studio inside it to make the website and apps and structured content. And G Suite is used for the calendar and word processing. Uh, while uh, HubSpot is used for uh, marketing automation and CRM purposes and pop-up forms and lead scoring. Uh, while Slack is an uh, internal communication tool, Siteimpro, it 
it's uh, m many of you probably know it already, uh, but it's an integration in uh, you can have it in Content Studio, which uh, essentially finds broken links and and yeah, two lengthy paragraphs, and yeah, it makes uh, the quality of your site much better. Search Console is uh, used uh, used for uh, SEO purposes, while Google Analytics is used to just see how well the your content is performing. So we're using a lot of different technologies to uh, make our content uh, better and uh, the project production of our content better and inform decisions. So the results of uh, our content apps um, is like this. It's, uh, it's it has generated uh, hundreds of um, quality, high quality blog posts and landing pages and more. It's um, supporting sales processes with them. Um, we can also always have relevant content to uh, our salespeople can have relevant content to send to prospective partners or clients. We also have seen a 400% increase in traffic since we started with this uh, stuff in June 2018. And it uh, has gone from zero to hundreds of international leads uh, yearly, which is <laughs> must be said to be a good thing as we tried, uh, have tried to expand into international uh, terrain. And we have got a handful of new customers, which is uh, obviously very good. So uh, content ops is, um, if you can, uh, if you want to um, uh, sum it up in three uh, keywords, it's uh, consistency, rep repeatable and scalable. Uh, this means that um, a consistency means that it ensures the same tone of voice, brand compliance across every channel uh, in an easy way because everything is so structured in order and but while still being flexible. And repeatable, uh, as you can see, we have this process going on every half year. It's, uh, it ensures that the structure ensures that it can be done every time, not some mystical one of lucky shot or something like that. And uh, scale scalability means that uh, you can have uh, even smaller teams than we have or, or much larger teams across several departments and geographies uh, in, with this principle. It's, it can be done and it, 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 just, it can be fitted exactly to the, your organizational needs. One question for Vegar. Uh, it was from uh, Torstein. Uh, or Samson in Yanside. In terms of content apps, Vega, in what way do you include UX writing in your operations? Working with stuff like uh, micro copy within your applications, like the platform itself, and applications like Content Studio. Uh, Vega, he uh, replied, so he replied here. Uh, we don't work with that particular content, but I can easily imagine it being treated the same way as blog posts. Due to the reusable nature of Anonic, I think the best practice is to keep uh, a microcopy to the bare minimum. Reuse them where apl applicable and submit them to the editorial process as presented. Involve the right roles um, like uh, UX expert as a reviewer and use the relevant technologies to ensure the efficient handling of the content from genesis to maintenance. But I'm, I'm assuming we got a, we're referencing like a shorter text stuff you want to reuse across multiple, both interfaces and, and combined with other, other texts, yeah. right? Uh, and definitely XP will support this. So either if you're just using small content types uh, to build this, or if you're using presentation layer things like like fragments, where you can yeah. build a component and reuse it, uh, mm. that's for sure. It's sort of designed for this, and um, and yeah. then the beauty is you can maintain that and publish that in its own sort of lifecycle. You could even have a separate project just to handle the microtext if you want.